All right, excellent afternoon to all those who are watching me across the state in Nigeria. When I see movement like this protest and understand that they are driven by our fellow Nigerians, I feel truly proud of our democratic spirit. However, when I observe the government's response and potential manipulation by various interest groups, I'm concerned about our future and the future of unborn children of Nigeria. Every protest highlights underlining social economic issues that demand our attention and resolution. Again, I say welcome to another interesting episode of Real Talk with Kike. I remain your convener, your executive producer, your writer, name is Kike Lovatodaw. Guys, it's important for us to hear what on this day, this segment asked for us today. Please stay with me. Let's listen, it, listen to it together and take a cue from it. I'll be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with me. I believe that today, as Nigerians continue to face uh, um, urbanization challenges, you know, in terms of legacy that remains remains relevant, I believe that you know the ishakus, or if that's the right word to use, now in terms of the legacy remains, you know, something that is uh, that is important to bring to fall and. His work in integrating sustainable practices and strategic planning is a cornerstone for current and future urban development efforts. And I want to emphasize on the fact that the modern day planners and policy makers can draw inspiration from his contributions to create resilient, sustainable um, cities that can accommodate Nigerians in you know, a growing population while mitigating environmental impact. And I, his vision also is something that I would like to bring to fore right now, because I feel his vision underscores you know, the importance of comprehensive urban planning in fostering sustainable uh, development and improving the living standards in Nigeria. I believe that's the main message on, on this day news two segment today. It's time for a quick message from my sponsors. When I return, we'll dive straight to the topic at night. Please stay with me. I'll be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with me. With just two days to the August 1st countrywide protest against hardship and hunger allegedly brought on the country by some of the policies of current administration President Bola Tinubu, Nigerians are still largely divided over the choice of demonstration to register their displeasure with the government. And the recent endorsement of national wild protest by Peter Obi, the Labour Party's 2023 presidential candidate. Obi's support highlights the their economic you know, conditions driving citizens to the, to the streets. And while he advocates the lawful and civil demonstration uh, with various organizations, including Khan and NAS, you know, that urge members, you know, to avoid the protest, citing potential violence. City, I mean, civil society groups accuse the government of intimidation tactics and the petroleum tanker drivers con uh, 
co condemn political motives. On the live show today, I will have real talk around the planned protest, you know, uh, focusing on the underlying causes, the government's impact or the government's res responses, the economic impact, and the potential path to uh, a path forward in terms of the lessons learned, how do we move forward from this? But before we delve into real talk with my guest, I think it's important for me to play his profile. When I come back, we'll be listening to him. Stay with me, I'll be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with us. Let me use this opportunity to quickly usher in my girls. Welcome to the show, Deji Adenyodri. It's a pleasure to have you on Real Talk with Kike's show today. I know that you are for the protest and for the sake of balanced journalism and fairness to the public to have a balanced judgment. I will be asking questions to represent the minds of Nigerians. So my first question to you, but before then, how are you doing today? Many thanks for creating time to do this with me. I'm very well indeed. Thank you for having me. Many thanks for doing this with me. So let's just dive straight to the Thank topic you. at hand. You know, nothing revolves outside history in Nigeria as far as I'm concerned. You know, Nigerians have June 12, 1993 in mind. And more recently, it's answered. I would like to ask you, what good has come out of protest, uh, Deji? Because the demonstrations that we call peaceful, that has, that has been to the benefit of Nigerians in terms of narrow appreciation, increased employment, better standard of living, I'm asking in pain, what exactly, in terms of us following the, through, uh, the, the, the thorough process of history and the culture that we have created, what benefits do you think will come out of this impending protest? Yes, a whole lot of benefits will come out because, you know, this democracy we are enjoying is a result, is a, was a result of protest, agitation. Even the independence that we enjoy today as a nation is as a result of uh, struggle against the colonial masters and imperialism. Uh, the idea of equality in race, culture, religion, the result of protests and struggle uh, for emancipation and equality mm -hmm. the world over. Even gender equality was a result of series of unending protests. Black segregation in America led by the sage Martin Luther King and several other critical uh, civil rights movement activists was as a result of uh, protests. So protest is one of the veritable platforms of engineering so social change the world over. Uh, protest has done a lot of good. Uh, SARS, the criminal gang uh, called SARS, was disbanded uh, even here on home soil in Nigeria as a result of the NSAS protest. Uh, protest has done so much good. Protest ensures that leader, leader, leaders will get complacent and take the privilege to serve. Leaders are not masters. They are servants of the people for granted. So those are the good that protect, protest world over has brought to modern civilization. Clearly. And saying that protest has done a lot of mm. good. Some Nigerians believe that this protest we call peaceful fighting for our rights to end Bad governance is political. I stand to, to stay real on this platform. Presidential candidate of Labour Party has backed the protest 
amongst many others. How do you want to prove us right that it is not political driven by the benefits? Nigerians have nothing to prove to anyone for expressing themselves. While we sympathize with the Tinubu government because it's just one year old, however, uh, Nigerians are not immune from some of the bad policies of the government, you know, whether these are or previous governments. And this is this is what oh. gives rise to protests in the country. Uh, having said this, I also sincerely believe that protest is an unalienable right of the citizens of Nigeria and that at all times, Nigerians must be enjoined to make use of this precious gift given to them, not just by the constitution, but by God. You know, even God listens to our protests when we cry. And that is the essence of prayers and supplications. You know, so it, 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 it will not augur well for a nation when there's no room for dissent. Yes, having said that, I also recognize yeah. the fact that all women in Nigerians want a peaceful protest, a protest that will not degenerate, a protest that all leaders and stakeholders in the country can be proud of. None of us will be happy if the protest degenerates. And that's why we're calling on all critical stakeholders in the country to ensure as much as possible that the protest is peaceful. It is also the responsibility and duty of government at all levels to ensure that these protests are extremely, extremely peaceful. Many thanks for that insight right there, especially emphasizing on peaceful protest. However, moving on, I would like to ask you this question, even though I know the answer already, but for the sake of having you as one of my guest speakers today, what are Nigerians demanding and what is the solution you know, to their demands? Is President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu and his cabinet, cabinet leaving the government you know, in terms of the solution that Nigerians are, are requesting for? Or what policies do you, do you think that Nigerians are requesting from him to take you know, the betterment of this economic challenges that we find ourselves in Nigeria forward. That's my first question to you. And my second question is the, is the fact that I was asked you earlier about history. History has always shown us that hijackers will forever be waiting, you know, to hijack peaceful protests. I must ask you, and as, as I know that you are somebody who still say things as they are in terms of being truthful, you know, I would like you to share with us now what plans are there to avoid or you know, con you know, contain all this issue of hijackers. If they do, should they, should we find ourselves in such circumstances in terms of maybe something becoming messy or bloody? Who will account for the lives of Nigerians and the property that will be lost? We must, you know, try to find a balance to all of this thing because anything can just sway the other side. Let's keep it real. Yes, so... Basically, Nigerians expect removal of forest subsidy. That's, that's the most important demand on this protest list. You know, if the government removes forest subsidy, bring, bring back sub subsidy, sorry, uh, all Nigerians will be hailing the president. And the president can even use it as political mileage uh, going into the next election. Uh, because uh, we know that the economy is very extremely bad, but we are also mindful of the fact that you know, several policies have worsened the already balkanized economy that Buhari left behind. You know, uh, I don't know why the, the government, this government does not blame Buhari enough, you know, uh, but uh, it, it's still the same APC government, so they, they have to take the part of the blame themselves. Also, uh, the, the protest wants a situation where politicians will no longer be paid. You know, uh, that uh, politics is not a profession, it's a hobby. Uh, politicians should uh, leave their offices and go to the National Assembly or the Ministry of Health. Uh, the Minister, Minister of Ministry of Health will leave the hospital and go to uh, the National, to the Federal Ministry of Health to just give national service without pay because the country is broke. We cannot continue to afford to subsidize for politicians when we cannot subsidize for the poor. All nations in the world, you know, subsidize prices, uh, goods and services for their citizens. The U.S., U.K., France, Canada, Russia, China, they all huh? do subsidy for all their citizens. In fact, if you get out of job today in the U.K., it's almost starting that the next day, 
you are going to be getting monthly payments from the government because the essence of that is so that we wouldn't become idle and become a menace to the society. So why should the case of Nigeria be different? The IMF will be misleading on the developed nations about uh, not subsidizing for the citizenry while developed nations are uh, give, doing even food subsidy for their citizens. As far as some countries subsidize walnuts for their citizens, you know, and, and granite oil and vegetable oil and all kinds of um, products. So those are the issues. Or additionally, how do we, to the second level of the question, how do we, pre do we prevent hijackers from the protest? Uh, from recent history, uh, history has shown that it's government, mm -hmm. you know, that actually sponsored hijackers of peaceful protests. We saw this during Hemsas when government vehicles, Prados, were used. The security agencies were dropping tugs at strategic locations where Hemsas protesters were so that uh, they can be attacked. We saw uh, government sponsored tugs attack peaceful protesters in Lagos as well. We saw police vehicles used to drop off tugs to attack peaceful protesters here in Abuja. We're, we're all part of the answers, and we saw this happen live, and the videos are still on the internet for verification. Mm -hmm. So, this particular government, even the protests in Kenya, the much talked about protests in Kenya, degenerated because the military was used to attack protesters. Thugs were unleashed on protesters, and that was why there was a pushback. You know, protests degenerated into uh, riots when uh, government backed or non actors. Uh, backed by government, attack peaceful protests. So we make a special appeal that the government should desist from using talks to attack peaceful protesters in the north, in the south, mm -hmm. in the federal capital territory here in Abuja, and other parts of the country. And once government commits to that, and government also directs security agencies not to attack protesters, the peace protests should be as peaceful as possible. Also, we have just written a letter, you know, to the uh, chief of army staff of course directing him and urging him to not to send soldiers on the streets that soldiers belong in the barracks uh, we, we saw the role that the soldiers played during the answers where they went to the toll gate and they killed mm. innocent protesters singing uh, the national anthem and holding the nigerian flag they were the one who also escalated the situation the kenyan situation too soldiers are to be were, were the ones who went to shoot at protesters and subsequently the protest became violent. So these are the issues. All right, many thanks for that elaborate submission. And of course, letting us know that, you know, you've actually sent that letters to the right offices to make sure that there will be peaceful protests. But putting that aside, before we go on a break, you know, we need to be factual about ourselves that Nigerian system and economy is a complex one, needs gradual fixing and strategic repair over time. If we understand that, I believe that uh, we'll need time and strategy in terms of dialogue with all different parties, so to speak, or counterparties. Do we think that this government is sitting idle is another thing I'm trying to bring to fore right now. Not talking about us being proactive in terms of actions that should be taken before the protests and the likes and all of that, which I agree with you entirely when I stumbled on one of your uh, um, comments on social that says that um, 100,000 era is no new, is no, is no longer 10,000 era because of the bad policies. The Naira value is appalling. I must, you know, keep it real with you with what you've said. And if uh, you were CBN governor, you know, what policies should we be using, you know, DG to stabilize exchange rates that have uh, become so um, challenging for many of us today, especially those who are entrepreneurs? Basically, it's very simple. You know, uh, the, the problem in this part, part of the world is that the issue of forex, Nigeria is battling with forex inflow. And the reason why this is, this is happening is because we are, we, we are not a pro producing nation. We do not produce the things we consume or eat. So we have to rely on import for majority of our products. So we need to a situation where we can drive export because exports will guarantee forex since the forex only comes from without, not within. 
And therefore, we also need to stop crude oil theft because crude oil theft is one of the reasons why uh, we are not having enough forex, you know, at the Apex Bank to run the economy. Uh, additionally, there are no hanging fruits on how to stop crude oil theft on the high seas. Because crude, crude oil thefts in the creeks have re drastically reduced. Now the crude, crude oil is stolen on the high mm -hmm. seas. And the Navy is culpable. And this is why I think the president in, because Nigeria is in a des desperate situation, uh, the president needs to allow the military to get involved in preventing crude oil theft on the high seas. And I believe that General Lagbaja uh, should be drafted in. Even if, it, even if the president does not want to remove the Navy, that several petitions have been written against them being culpable in the in crude oil theft in the country. Let General Lagbaja be made to supervise uh, policing of uh, oil uh, movements in and out of the country. You know, I think if that is done, we can be able to ramp, ramp up more products for local refinery. Refining, since we now have Dangote refinery and also enough for export. If we're able to do that, we'll have more uh, forex and the economy will do fair better. Additionally speaking, uh, this is a nation of over 200 million people. If you go to the airport right now, thousands of people are traveling. You see people flying on Emirates, flying on Qatar, Turkish oh. Air, even Ethiopian Air here. But Nigeria has big, oh. as big with a massive population that should be an advantage, we do not have a national carrier. If we have a national carrier, we'll be able to generate a lot of forex. Also, many people will be able to uh, stop over in Nigeria and shop if we improve the economy. We'll, because Nigeria, if you look at the, the, the map of Nigeria on the continent, we are strategically positioned. This should be an aviation hub for the rest of the continent. You know, and but we are not taking these low aviation uh, opportunities, which is a low hanging fruit for the economy. We generate forex. Also, there are several other key sectors of the economy, like the tourism sector of the economy. So this, these are the things that can bring in uh, forex to the country. We have a thriving entertainment industry that, if well managed, can bring in a lot of uh, forex into our country. We have a thriving uh, Nollywood uh, industry that can bring in a lot of forex into the country, to, into the country, if we solve the issue of piracy and other related issues. So these are the ways to generate revenue for the Apex Bank and also invariably the country. Many thanks again for that elaborate submission right there. We've got a quick break and get a word from my sponsor. When I return, the conversation will continue. Please stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Real Talk with Kike. Yes, right there with us. In case you just joined the show, so this conversation, um, we've delved into the conversation of nationwide impending protest and their economic and political implications. You know, we've also explored the driving forces behind this protest, the government's responses and the potential paths forward, and of course the actions you know, that have been taken also by my guests today in making, making sure that there's a peaceful protest. You know. And you know, talking about my guest is an esteemed guest, that's Deji Adenyoju. He's the chair of Center for Liberty and convener of Concerned Nigerians with a career in advocacy and activism he has, he has brought or he brings um, a wealth of experience and insights into Nigeria's social political landscape. And I must say many thanks, you know, uh, Deji, for all your submission thus far and for lending your voice on issues that affect us all. Let me use this opportunity to quickly open our phone lines. Remember, uh, you can be part of this conversation by calling the studio number 811 one one three showing it will be showing on your screen uh, very soon and of course we're streaming live from facebook both on real talk wiki platform and on silverbird platform you know again i say many thanks many thanks for all your submission thus far but you know recently the government or the nigerian government has been accused of using blackmail and intimidation in suppressing you know quite a number of uh, 
of actions out there, you know, how valid are these accusations? And I must ask you, what impact do they have on the credibility of the government's action and the protesters' demand? And the reason why I'm bringing this to fall is because I also read, you know, I, or I stumbled on it before coming online, how uh, Shewe uh, Mi says that in a democratic setting, the language and the measures sh should be civilized and it should, you know, tilt towards, you know, consultation, conversation, and short intervention. I want to add dialogue to it military tactics in terms of strikes or protests, you know, demonstration, et cetera, with the issue at hand. I like the fact that you've, you know, um, uh, I also saw when we went on break now, how uh, news, have, uh, news broke that you also have requested that soldiers, you know, should be, should be called back, which you've also given in terms of your submission earlier. But with my questions, what's your submission thus far? Yes, basically, uh, when you have the likes of Bayo Nonuga, as an aid, then you have almost 99 aid, zero economic advisors, people that can really solve problems. What you have is this kind of government where propagandas, propaganda lies will be more than the actual uh, work done. So that is why you are seeing all these uh, uh, underhand tactics by the government. Uh, unfortunately for the government, you know, uh, the economic situation in the country has not improved. And that is the most important indices or parameter that any government can be judged. You know, uh, the government needs to focus more. You know, the, the government needs to fo the, the government needs to focus more on getting the economy. All right, I think the network is a bit. Yes, so sorry about that interruption. Getting the economy working, yes, getting the economy working is more important than the propaganda of the government, you know, and which is the most important thing. Also, I also feel generally that, you know, it's important that uh, the issues around the protest, Nigerians should not be distracted, Nigerians should ignore the intimidation and the insinuations by government, and just focus on the key issues, which is basically hunger. You know, Nigerians are more interested in the, the government finding a solution to the hunger problem, because that is what this protest is about. This protest is against hunger, and, you know, that is what Nigerians should focus basically on and ignore the distractions and side comments and other issues that government sympathizers and supporters are raising. Thanks again for that insight. But yeah. I must ask you, because I've been struggling with it, I must stay real with you on this platform. Uh, we intend to go on 10-day strike, DG. How and why do we want to shut down the nation and individual businesses? I don't understand for 10 days. And the means of livelihood running into billions of naira. Personally, my own business, my project, what millions of money have been disrupted as I sit here with you in terms of trying to navigate through other means of postponing certain things because of this impending protest. And I'm, and I'm wondering, do we, do we have an idea of how much we will be losing per day in terms of billions of money if we, if we hold this protest for 10 days? Yes. The, the country has been working for 365 days, but it looks like the country is taking a uh, million ba uh, steps backward. So maybe we need to pause and have a rethink and mm -hmm. now see maybe we've been heading in the wrong direction. You know, and nobody is saying that the country should be halted for 10 days. And you are just going to peacefully protest for 10 days, you know, and government can even prevent the protest from happening in the first place. You know, uh, our appeal, general appeal to everyone is that this protest is going to be very peaceful. It's not going to be disruptive, yeah. you know. So people have nothing to fear. Even the government has nothing to fear. The security agencies should work with us, work with critical stakeholders and protesters to make this very seamless, you know. And we, we are trusting and hoping that after day one, government will meet the majority of the demands of the protesters. Also, as, yeah. uh, as it is only the president that can actually determine whether this protest will go on or not. You know, the president can just decide to make a broadcast and everything will be okay. I 
agree completely with you. And I know that, you know, coming into the studio and somebody was saying that, oh, my guest today even looks like, an, uh, like a foreigner, that both of us, we both look like foreigners. So in my mind, I'm just wondering, a handsome man like you, you know, lending your voice on issues that affect us all, in the light of this ongoing protest, what role do you, will you suggest international organizations and foreign governments play in support of mediating the situation in Nigeria? Because whatever thing is going on right now, I feel that we might need intervention of international bodies. I start to be corrected. If they are willing to come on board to see how we can navigate the, the challenges in our hands. And my last question to you, because of time, because they will start running commentary in my years right now, is that given the various reactions from um, organizations like Khan, NANS, what does this support or opposition signify for the legitimacy and the importance of this protest? Or maybe uh, impact, uh, rather. Yes, I'll take from the last question. Khan does not have any credibility uh, as regards to this protest because all this while that Nigerians have been suffering, why didn't they take, uh, one uh, enforce upon the president to end the suffering of Nigerians? Why didn't they go and force and enforce on the president to uh, prevent hyperinflation? Why is it that, that, that it's now that Nigerians want to uh, express themselves that all of a sudden Khan has found his voice? Having said that, also the issue of uh, the international organizations and um, development partners and other countries that want to lend the support to Nigeria as regards to the, the protests. Uh, I think it, they, are, they, they should caution the government as regards to how mm -hmm. the government should do with protesters, that the government and security agencies should be civil. Many of the security agencies a C funding from DFID, European Union, and all these development partners. So this is the time for them to actively play a role in ensuring that they respect the fundamental human rights of citizens, uh, and that they should caution the, the military. And the military have no business in civil issues. Uh, we are not, Nigeria is not going to war, so there's no need for any sort of form of military deployment, since Nigeria is not going to war with Cameroon or Ghana. Or we need job, you know. So these protests and civil engagement is for the police. Uh, the engagement should be for strictly for that of the police, which is saddled with responsibility of internal security. The internal security issues around the protest should the, the, the police should be allowed to deal with them. And and the police should be enjoined that they should be as civil as possible. They should even give protesters water, you know, and this is uh, an opportunity to launder the image of the Nigerian police force to the rest of the world, since they already have a, a, a renowned, battered name for human rights foundations. All right. Again, many thanks. Many thanks. You know, Deja uh, Deyoju for all your submission thus far. It's been an interesting time with you. But before I let you go, there's the last segment of the show that I call Trending Story. These are stories that affect us, that affect you and I as Nigerians, as Africans. And this is where I can exercise an opinion that I get cited on. And the first trending story that caught my attention today is, is the federal government that suspends, you know, the import, import of uh, duties, taxes on essential food items to address hunger. The hunger that you have been talking about, you know, all along as we began this uh, um, show today, but you know, first of all, let me give my submission. I can see actionary forces in play here because I can see the government uh, is responsive and yielding to the demands of the people at the expense of their own strategy. And this policy will likely have uh, an immediate, you know, impact on the cost of essential food items, making them more accessible to a larger, you know, uh, portion of uh, population in Nigeria. You know, lower food prices will reduce the financial uh, restraints, or will I say, strains on families, allowing them to, you know, allocate their limited resources to other pressing needs such as healthcare, education, you know, accommodation, name it. While this suspension of import duties is a welcome relief, I must emphasize on this platform. It also raises several, several critical points regarding border control and the potential for imported, you know, inflation. With lower import costs, there might be an increase in the volume of imported goods, you know, 
I, I keep it real on this platform because this could, you know, strain the existing border uh, control infrastructure in terms of necessity, necessity enhancing measures to prevent uh, smuggling and the influx of, you know, sub, uh, substandard or dangerous goods. So the NCS, if you ask me, has committed to intensifying efforts to combat this, you know, proliferation of, you know, arms and dangerous weapons through Nigerian borders, but it is, it is extremely crucial as any relaxation in, in, in border uh, uh, vigilance could be exploited by different elements if we are not careful, undermining national security. Therefore, I am saying on this platform, while we celebrate the reduction in import costs, it is imperative to maintain robust border control measures to safeguard the country. So this announcement also highlighted, you know, the border economic um, relief or re reforms, rather, including um, streamlined export processes and the introduction of advanced ruling system and authorized economic oper uh, operators. So these measures also uh, aims to enhance trade efficiency, stimulating economic growth, and creating new opportunities for Nigerian farmers, you know, in terms of the artisans, entrepreneurs, you know, name it. So this suspension, again, I must emphasize, especially when it comes to import duties and taxes on essential food items, is a significant step towards, you know, elevating the economic and financial uh, burden on Nigerians. So it's a move that addresses immediate hunger and financial stress while laying the uh, groundwork you know for more sustainable economic growth through enhanced trade and what else again maybe facilitation and border security measures that have earlier uh, measures so as we embrace this positive development you know it is essential to remain vigilant and ensure that the measures and imp uh, are implemented you know effect uh, effectively and beneficial for all nigerians regardless of whatever class fostering a more resilient um, prosperity economy in nigeria uh Deji, let me come to you quickly what's your submission on this trending i, I must sincerely commend the government for the tariff reduction or eradication for certain uh, food items. In fact, I am of the view, the opinion, that it should be a total and comprehensive one because uh, the food inflation is to the roof of the country. So it, it, it's really something that the president should consider with the view of uh, drag, further driving down prices of food in the country. I also believe that, yes, we are having shortfall in revenue, but jacking up interest rates is not in the best interest of the country because, because the economy of the country is crumbling. And yes, while we need money to fund our budgets and also fund the expensive lifestyle of politicians, but I think the best way is to look elsewhere, not on food, food uh, uh, and the uh, import tariff, since we are not a country that produces a lot that we consume. So it is better for the country to eradicate uh, complete eradication of import tariff on all food items. That is my call. Thanks again for giving your submission on trending that affect us. Well, the second trending story that caught my attention is that of Tunubu that directs NMPC to sell crude oil to Dangote refinery in Naira. You know, there are quite a number of, you know, um perception you know or perspective to this um trending and i just want to stay put to uh the professionalism because this is a good one if you look at it if you ask me we need to protect our own make businesses easy for them to survive uh that is the role of government to to provide aid and policy support to the private sector they are both to play hand in hand to deliver economic uh, prosperity so this move is aimed to stabilizing the the, 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 the the pump price of fuel and the dollar naira exchange rate. As we all know, or as you know, the cost of fuel has been a major concern uh, for all of us uh, today that is affecting us in terms of transportation, goods, and even our daily expenses. Earlier, you know, DG, you also mentioned how you just want the uh, uh, fuel subsidy. You mentioned on the fuel subsidy, which is part of the challenges that, uh, that, uh, that, that has brought us to where we are today. But 
you know, by selling crude oil in Naira, you know, if you ask me, I feel that the government hopes to reduce the pressure on the Naira and keep fuel prices stable. And Dangote Refinery, which is a significant player, you know, in our oil industry, currently needs about 15 cargoes of crude oil annually, costing um, about 13.5 billion dollars. You know, and NMPC has already committed to supplying four cargoes. The Federal Executive Council, that's the FEC, you know, has now you know approved that 450,000 barrels of crude oil meant for domestic consumption to be sold in Naira to Nigerian refineries, starting with Dangote Refinery as a pilot project. You know, the benefit of this in, in initiative as follows. I felt that I need to, uh, you know, highlight this is the fact that stabilizing the exchange rate uh, for me by conducting these transactions in Naira, I believe that it will reduce the demand for dollar, which should help stabilize the exchange rate in the first place. And this means a more stable economy and less down in the prices of goods and services. The second one that I would like to bring to fore quickly is the fact that the lower pump prices, you know, with crude oil, you know, being sold in Naira, the cost of importing refined fuel or fuel should decrease, it, leading to more stable and possible lower fuel prices at the pump. So this is a welcome, if you ask me, welcome relief for all Nigerians, you know, who have been feeling the pinch of high fuel cost, you know, for the average Nigerian, this initiative could mean more, something that is more predictable and possibly lower fuel prices which will reduce the transportation costs and lower the prices of goods and services apart from the fact that you know earlier we mentioned how they are removing taxes and the likes on food uh, commodities so it also means more stable naira which can lead to a stronger economy and a better you know purchasing power for all of us so the, this directive by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a strategic move for me you know in terms of strengthening our economy and he is the financial body on Nigeria, especially when it comes to ease of doing business. However, the success of this initiative will depend on the effective implementation and the cooperation of all parties involved. Because uh, as we all know, in Nigeria, so many things happen you know, in, in the public space. But when it comes to documentation, it's another thing entirely. But before I come to you to give your submission on this, let me quickly touch this last you know, trending story, which you can now give your submission on both, which is the fact that the third trending story is Nigerian Communication Commission. That's the NCC that direct telecoms uh, companies to reactivate all blocked lines. And you know what? Uh, this has caused a lot of friction or the you know issues in the last 48 hours or 24 hours. The NCC that confirmed that MTN, Airtel, Globalcom, and other telecoms operators as indeed blocked lines not linked to NINs, you know, the NIN SIM linkage exercise, which began, I think, in 2020 to be precise, which aims to enhance national security and ensure that the national uh, SIM ownership database is accurate, you know. And this disconnection led to rumors that that, that was an attempt by the government to stiff and bad governance uh, protests against hunger and economic hardship while you, you know, publicized by frustrated youths, you know. And I saw some of the comments that was made by human rights lawyer Ebuolu Adegboruwa, and of course I saw the one that Shubore also put out there that they are trying to frustrate the protest by restricting internet access, called on the NCC to step in. So we all know the game that is being played and I'm happy that the people are wiser. They see the plan of the NCC. I also love that the government, you know, is also proactive and the public interest is driving them to be fair. So for many Nigerians, this reactivation is a huge relief because I know that even my husband was affected by it. Quite a number of my loved ones, you know, my staff, so many people were affected by it. So it means that, you know, millions can continue their daily acti activities without interruption. So businesses can run smoothly. Students can continue their online courses or classes. And families can stay connected to one another. However, it is also important for me to highlight the ongoing issue of the compliance with the NIN SIM linkage, you know, that is uh, uh, important. With over, I think, with over 224 million uh, subscribers in Nigeria and only 105 million uh, uh, NINs issued, you know, and there's still significant gap that needs to be addressed regarding this. So I just feel that, you know, we must comply to the regulations on this. Let me come to you quickly. Did you watch your submission 
on these two trends or any of the trends that you can quickly put your, um, your thoughts or your, or your, yeah. Yes, so basically, number one is, yes, so basically, basically the first is uh, the issue of uh, the executive order by the president. I don't think the president should have issued an executive order, though commendable, to ensure local refining of products. Uh, we must give kudos to the president for that. But I don't think the president should have issued an executive order in the face of the PI, PI, PIA mm -hmm. uh, bill. I think the president should have just, you know, allowed a situation where NNPC will have done the needful as regards to that. And the disconnection of the telecos done by uh, MTN, I think, is a gross breach and violation of people's rights, uh, you know, as guaranteed and enshrined in the Constitution. And I think we are going to we are going to challenge and seek redress in court because I and many others are, were directly affected by the decision of MTN. You know, having said that, uh, I think sincerely speaking that uh, these multinationals there should be consequences for bad behavior in the country, and um, so that they will be held liable that the interests of the citizens will be protected at all times. Thank you. Many thanks for all your submission thus far. With that, we've come to the end of another edition of Real Talk with Mikael. Indeed, I had an awesome time with you, my resourceful guest, Deji Adenyoju. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank, thank you for you lending. So much for having me on the show. Thank, thank you for you. lending your voice and issues uh, that affect us all. And I wish you the very best as you continue to lend your voice. And more importantly, I pray for protection over you and your family as you continue to do this. On this note, this is where I draw the curtains of the show. Till I come your way next week, remember to, uh, to be kind to one another, stay blessed, and catch me tomorrow at Inspiration FM 92.3. Bye now.